Welcome everyone to Victory 3D's Final Render. And today we actually have an environmental artist who worked on popular titles such as Warframe and Gears Tactics, along with having his own YouTube channel called I vs. I. So here I want to introduce you guys to Desmond Munn. So Desmond, so tell our audience what do you do and how did you get here? Hey, uh, my name is Desmond. Thank you for having me on Final Render. Uh, I'm currently a environment artist working at Digital Extremes on Warframe. And uh, in uh, with my journey, essentially, I started off uh, studying at the University of Hertfordshire on the games art course. Uh, I studied there for three years. I got a uh, bachelor's degree there. And then um, my first job actually was at a company called Eurocom. And I worked on a uh, game called 007 Legends, which... Uh, was sadly the last game that Eurocom worked on. Um, but once I moved from Eurocom, I uh, went to Asia and I worked in Hong Kong for about three and a half years where I kind of like got my feel of the 3D industry a bit. I got to try different things. So I went from, uh, I went into, sorry, I went to, I went into things like architecture, interior design. Uh, some product design, uh, some some things which were considered uh, creative agencies where they take on uh, clients that and they, they kind of do a bit of everything. So I got to test a bit on like app development, mobile development. Uh, but essentially, you know, after my journey in uh, Hong Kong, I kind of realized console games is what I wanted to do. So I eventually packed up and moved back to the UK uh, to work on another console game where uh, I took up a job at Sumo Digital, which uh, at the time was uh, had hired me to work on uh, Dead Island 2. So um, I, worked at, I worked on Dead Island 2 for a bit, and then uh, at some point I entered an art station contest uh, where I kind of lucked, lucked out, I got like top three, uh, and it got me a little bit of exposure, which uh, led to me working at Splash Damage afterwards, uh, and that's how I ended up working on Gears Tactics. So after working on Gears Tactics for about a year and a bit, uh, predominantly making most of their rocks, like rocks, I was kind of known as the rock guy <laughs> on the project. Uh, after he had basically shipped that game, I had then been offered a job at Digital Extremes to work at Warframe, which is where I am now. <laughs> okay. So now a lot of our viewers are mostly in college. So when you were young, did you want to be a game artist or was it something you grew into over time? Um, yeah, I don't think I ever really thought I'd end up being, uh, working, or I didn't think I'd ever be, like, a game artist, to be honest. Uh, I played a lot of games growing up, and I loved gaming, uh, and I liked to draw, but I'd never really, uh, had a spark for, like, digital art until, I guess, until I saw it for the first time. Um, then, like, initially, I went to Hertfordshire uh, with a 2D portfolio, uh, which was all animation. And uh, I had no idea about uh, making 3D art at the time. So uh, essentially, like, once I saw, like, the demo reel, uh, it was kind of like, wow, like, you know, with this 3D stuff. And, and I was like, students made this? This doesn't make... There's no way that students made this. And I realized that this course offered these kind of tools and this kind of teaching. And, like, instantly, I was just like, um, this is what I want to do. And that was kind of, like, the time where I realized... Uh, I wanted to do 3D. Uh, and even at that point, I still didn't really know if uh, I was going to become a games artist. I was like, kind of like, uh, I enrolled for a 3D animation course. And then somewhere around like the one year into the course, I decided that I really enjoyed modeling. And um, and then I, I kind of like transferred to the games art course afterwards. And then from that part onwards, I was kind of like, yeah, this is definitely what I want to do. You know, it's, it's pretty fun. So that's pretty much when I kind of knew, if anything. It was a later, uh, a later passion, if anything. And this is something you actually developed, like, as far as in college, or was it in high school? Because I, I know, like, from my perspective, when I was young, like, we actually had, like, a, a 3D class or, or a media class which consists of, like, 3D, 2D, um, and things of that nature. Now, did you actually have like something like that in college? I mean, in high school, or was that something you got into in college? Um, it was definitely a college thing. I mean, um, in in the UK, uh, our college would be university. So, um, 
when I was actually in college, which I think is like high school in like America. Um, around that time, I was only I was I was doing fine art really, so um, I was painting a lot at college. Um, and then once I went to university, that's when I kind of started all the digital stuff. Uh, so it was kind of like I learned that um, I, I pretty much built my way towards an entry level uh, artist from uh, in three years at, uh, on the Hertfordshire uh, Games Art course. Now let's talk about universities. Since not a lot of people didn't get the right job right away, what would be your advice for those who didn't make their first cut and how to stay motivated in getting the job in the industry? Um, I would say I wouldn't stress too much that um, you don't, you're not quite ready once you come out of uh, studying. I think like uh, one of the biggest things is that you're you're never really ready um, unless like you know, like most most of these students that uh, I worked with uh, and some of the students that I actually studied with, uh, with when we uh, graduate from uni, we basically all realized like we had no idea what we were doing still. Um, so it's kind of normal to not feel like you're ready for it. Uh, I would say like the best advice with something like that though to at least stay motivated is to never not not stop that's the main thing like i think as an artist like the biggest thing is that you literally constantly deal with failure and um you know the idea of like you you have an image of something that you want to build in your head and then all of a sudden it's like you know once you do it and it doesn't look good you're kind of like okay what do i do now and then because you're not at uni anymore you're kind of like i don't have people to turn to anymore and be like oh i don't know how to figure this out figure that out because um you know technical problems and not knowing how to solve these technical problems uh artistically and actual technical like if you don't have anyone to turn to it can demotivate you like crazy so the biggest thing is like uh in times like that uh, to stay motivated i tend to you know, if, if I don't know how to fix a problem, you just kind of keep tackling it aggressively and repeating it and trying anything you can to kind of get around the issue uh, until eventually um, you kind of budge a bit and then you, you don't realize that you've kind of like found a way to solve the issue, but it's kind of like a no-brainer, constantly ramming at it kind of solution. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, yeah, this is like a like a a personal question now like was there any kind of like any website that you actually went to as far as like like uh that would that could actually help you resolve some of these issues because i know that we actually have some college students who do have come across problems and they don't know how to figure it out and at the same time we actually have some professors that do not know how to resolve those issues too, you know, because we end up having that, that, that same kind of scenario. Now, what would be your advice as far as like, like, uh, like having that, that student who's trying to resolve that issue, no matter if it's modeling, texturing, or even animating, you know, as far as where can they go to as far as like, like, uh, it's like any kind of communities or, 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 or places that they can go to to help resolve their issues. Yeah, um, I can't talk for things like, you know, uh, some other disciplines such as like, you know, let's say like VFX or animation because uh, I've honestly not scouted the um, side of the industry enough. Um, but I do know when it comes to like strictly the um, the model, uh, the modeling side of everything, uh, I would strongly recommend uh, Polycount. Polycount forums is... Uh, pretty much where I grew up on for a while. Um, you learn a lot from that place. Like you, you get a lot of people that help. You get a lot of people who give you tough love as well, which is very necessary in this industry. But um, you, if you join that forum as an environment artist, a character artist, prop artist, vehicle artist, whichever one. Actually, they they do also have um, some animation, uh, like some categories in there. I, I've not checked it enough, but like. Uh, essentially, that forum is, uh, in my, if through my eyes, like the best place to grow as an artist if you're trying to get into this industry. Um, I've not, I've not checked it in, in a little while, but as far as I'm concerned, it's still going strong. Um, but other than that, like, 
I'd like to believe that most people in places like Art Station are quite approachable. Um, I would, you know, gladly try and help people whenever I can. Like, uh, if people, when people tend to message me about stuff, I do tend to reply when I can get a moment to do it. But I'd like to believe that other artists on Art Station would do the same. So it's always good to like reach out to people. You never know, you know, uh, who might actually message back. You might make a connection that way as well. Cool. Now let's go ahead and uh, fast forward towards working in the industry because after all, like some people are like uh, get that chance to actually work with any any kind of game industry. No matter if it's, it's like a no matter if it's a small company or or a major company or big company. Now, what is life is like working in the industry as far as like being an environmental artist? Um, being a professional in the games industry is interesting. It's a, um, like honestly, it's a very chilled kind of, um, fun lifestyle. Uh, I, I personally wouldn't see myself in any other industry and being as happy, I guess, at the moment, because the actual like feeling of it is like, uh, I guess it's almost like, you know, being at uh, college or university still and you're like you meet all these other people who are there for the same purpose and you're all there just to create some really cool stuff um, so my general f feeling is like you know when I go into work it's kind of like I go into work to make cool things with friends you know uh, and this is like you know working at companies that and you know some AAA actually most AAA companies that I've been at anyway have pretty much not had a corporate vibe uh, I think some people think oh big companies um, they might be like uh, no one will ever be able to learn your name no one cares and this kind of stuff because I mean like every other industry that we know about and you know the bigger the company the more isolated you are and the less uh, the less you matter but like even at AAA companies I've been feel I've felt like you know um, you don't feel um, like you're just any other artist in the thing. You feel like you you're a part of the team and you're needed, and uh, it's a it's a really nice kind of environment altogether. On a day to day basis, it's kind of like uh, depend depending on the project. I guess like uh, when I was at uh, my last job, Splash Damage, it was like I go in and every day it was like we would be huddled together and we do stuff together, and um, you know it's like every time you would make a uh, you do a task for uh, the project, the guy to your left, the guy to the right, you know, um, whoever's behind you, all you guys will be doing the same thing. Uh, and it was just like, it's it's just, yeah, it's just nice. It's like you're kind of, the moment you get into the office, it's kind of like you're constantly uh, wired, you're constantly working because there's so much energy flying around as well. And it's a really good feeling. Um, but in terms of like actual tasks, and you know, uh, as I am right now at Digital Extremes, uh, quite lucky that I get to sculpt a lot of the time um, so I've been doing I do a lot of ZBrush work while um, I'm just having a coffee and stuff so it's pretty cool um, I would say like being uh, environmentalist it's uh, I guess like the tasks and the process of it is very company dependent uh, when I was at my last job at Splash Damage it was um, kind of like you stay in your lane uh, if you're environmentalist you'd literally only stay uh, in the production phase of it uh, so it's kind of like you, you. I guess you get to kind of uh, put uh, place a little bit of input when it comes to the design process. If you know you're working closely with a concept artist and stuff, you might be like, "Oh, I think this would be kind of cool," you know, for this thing because like um, you know this is like this object seems like it needs to be you know this thing and. Uh, say the concept artist is still like in the process of thinking about ideas to design it you know sometimes those ideas will go in but in terms of actually drawing it for them it's quite rare I would say those kind of jobs um, right now for example at Digital Extremes uh, we kind of get to touch a little bit of everything um, they're pretty open to uh, let you design stuff and then if they think it's good then they'll put it in you know so you get to kind of do a bit of everything here uh, but most jobs you know you don't really get that kind of freedom <laughs> But on a day-to-day -day basis, I'd say, um, let's say uh, every other tripway job that I've been at so far until this company, it was kind of like, uh, you get 
concept art from the con uh, from the concept artist, and then you have a brief discussion with your team. Uh, we plan out a lot of stuff, like maybe the lead. We like we need you to do this, we need you to do that, and then he separates the tasks for everyone to basically do what they need to do, and then you'll get your task. And your first job is to go and just block it out and get something ready for them to at least have an like a a uh, education uh, educated kind of like um, judgment on. And then it's just kind of like constantly going back and forth with uh, passes on these tasks until uh, they get a final green light from you know someone who's making the biggest decisions on the project. And then that's when you move on to the next phase. And it's kind of like uh, kind of how the daily process goes. It's like going back between tasks and pushing each task to the next kind of pass, um, which is, you know, pretty much what you do all day. <laughs> now, and with that, right, it would be like a follow-up. What would be the, the actual biggest challenge as far as being an environmental artist or being an artist working for a triple ti AAA title game or triple title company? Uh, I would say... Um, the biggest challenge, uh, maybe not just being an environmental artist, I think like just being an artist in general in this industry, uh, I would say is kind of realizing that you're not truly ready at anything. Uh, every new project, every new task, every like, even jumping to like every new um, like position as an artist, like you know going to something like uh, intermediate or even to like a senior or lead artist or something like that. Um, you're never really ready. You're going to have to hit the ground running of everything because every new challenge is like actually a new challenge. Uh, so once you kind of realize that um, you can't really be ready, but you can be adaptable, you know, that's kind of like, that was like the, the biggest thing for me to realize because I kept thinking that, you know, um, you had to be ready to take on new things, but sometimes you just got to go for the leap of faith. So that was like one of the biggest um, challenges of this industry for me. Um, I think another really big challenge was kind of, um, it kind of dips into this as well. Uh, it's kind of realizing that there's no perfect pipeline. There's things that you like to do and things that you're good at and there's a pipeline that you always do for your personal projects. But there might be programs that, um, you know, the company you're about to, that you start working for, they don't have or uh, they have a different workflow and they're like, this has always worked and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you might not be able to go against um, their workflow because they know that their workflow works. They don't want to try new things. You know, these things might happen, and then it's kind of it all kind of dips into the idea of like you have to be adaptable. You have to be ready to try new things and be hungry to try new things. Uh, you know, otherwise, if you don't try to adapt, I'm not gonna say you're gonna do a bad job, but you're gonna find it really hard um, trying to grow as an artist in this industry. And I think the other thing is just uh, learning to share. I think it's like, um, I think every artist that is passionate about doing something for a project, they're kind of like, they want to go in, they're like, oh, I want to take this from start to finish and have ownership on it. But like, the truth is, is that you don't really get to to do everything. Um, and it's like, a lot of the time you, you end up uh, having to work with other artists, which is great, because you know, you learn loads of things from other artists. But, um, I think like most artists who uh, work themselves to death to be great for this industry and then they get in and they're like, oh, I'm going to build everything. I'm going to do all this stuff. And then, uh, then they realize they can't. It's, you know, it's, it's better to know early on that you know, you're going to be working with other people and you know, uh, project sanity, you know, making sure that your stuff is clean is really necessary for this as well. This is like, I think the biggest, those are the biggest challenges uh, in this industry for me, for sure. Okay. And and this is touch up a little bit more on you was mentioning earlier about like, like uh, working with others. Now, do you think that being a team player is a very vital, important thing when working in the industry, rather than being a a uh, a one person show? As far as like you trying to do everything yourself, or 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 be a jack of all trades, as far as working, as far as an artist goes. Um. I would strongly um, advise that any artist that's coming to the industry should completely be keen on being a team player. Uh, I don't think, I honestly, I, I don't know, I have not heard many success stories where 
and all this has gone in and been like, um, oh, I'm, I'm going to be the best. I am the best. And you know, you don't need me. I can pull the weight for the entire team. Like it's, it never really works out. Like uh, no one really wants to work with that guy. So it's always good to, you know, be humble. Always be good to uh, make friends and, and be ready to work with other people. Uh, and this is the really cool thing about like uh, having a team. When you have a team that you trust in, you know, you don't even consider yourself as a thing that sticks out. You know, there's um, nothing special about you and there's nothing special about them. But when you guys are together, that's what makes the, the synergy special, right? Kind of like a gear and in a clock, right? Exactly, yeah. It's just it's just a, a, a thing about, um, about being with a, a team that trusts each other. If you have a team that doesn't trust each other, a lot of stuff doesn't get done. Uh, and you'd be surprised how uh, how easy, quick it is for you to fall out of the line in, in terms of like, uh, for example, styles for a project, you know, because every artist might have their own style or like stuff like that. Um, so, you know, team effort is everything for sure. Um, in terms of like specialization or jack of all trades, that kind of stuff, like it, it depends. I would say if you're trying to get to triple A, um, I'm not going to say like 100% of the time, I'm going to say about like, 85 90 percent of the time these companies are looking for a specialist so um you know th there are some times where they they see stuff in your portfolio and they're kind of like oh this guy can do a bit of everything that's kind of cool but it's you know um it's rare it's rare when you get a job where they hire you as a generalist um not to say you know that they don't exist but you know they it's rare uh but essentially yeah i would say like if you want to be a generalist and you know be you know a jack of all trades you're open to more freelancing, I would say. Where and you know, if you're not a team player, I'd say you know that's also um, more of a freelance gig. So it's it depends on how you are as a person. Some people might generally not like people, but like you know, they have to make a living. So you know, maybe they do freelance. But if you want to work at a company and you know something like Triple A, it's always better to be a team player and to be a specialist. <clears throat> now. I know I spoke to a few of my other students about this and some do actually strive to become environment artists and like, and if and they feel that they had to be like a, a modeler, a texture artist, um, to actually create like a very nice scenes. Now, as far as you being an environmental artist, that, that is that is a requirement to actually have or what something they need to learn or should it just or should they just worry about being the uh, the modeling, um, being the modeling aspect, or just try to lay out the actual level using game engines or things of that nature? Um, again, I guess it dips into the specialization of things. If you want to be an environment artist, like so, I'm gonna say it speaks strictly for uh, my my dependency because obviously things like animation and stuff is its own thing. But like um, in terms of environment art, if you want to be uh, hireable, you need to display a bit of everything uh, because there was a time uh, where things like being a you know substance artist or texture artist didn't exist. Uh, it was just like well, it was like it didn't exist, but it, it was like you know uh, m most people wouldn't hire you just to do that. You, most of the time, when you were environment artist, you do a bit of everything. Uh, you would do like the asset modeling, uh, which is now outsourced most of the time. So it's like you know. Uh, being an environment artist required you to know all these things, like you know, build the level, build the assets, uh, do the texturing, even do your own lighting, a little bit of the effects, just to kind of show them that you know your way around the engine. As these days now, you know, you have substance artists and and things like that. So it's like, I would say, if you want to be an environment artist, I would still do this to demonstrate that you know a bit of the pipeline. And plus, like, you, know, it's it's. It will kind of come together, really. It's like uh, you can't be a great environment artist and not know texturing. It kind of comes with the trade. Um, and it's the same with like you know being a character artist. It's like you know you couldn't be a great character artist without knowing how to do the texturing phase as well. Like you could do a great sculpt, but you know they want to see if you could texture it as well. So in that case, I would say you know if you're a still student, you're trying to get into your first job, do do a, a whole environment artist uh, portfolio where it does show you know uh, that you can sculpt it shows that you know how to bake things it shows that you have you know some environments where it shows that you know how to like build environment bring it together 
take it from start to finish because eventually um like the company wants to know if they can throw any random task at you that's in within the environment artist criteria and can they trust you to just take that and just go away and do it and if it's like you know you 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 can only build models but you have no texturing and uh, no complete environments they don't know if like you know they give you something you know, can you build something with this and if you can deliver uh, the idea is that you gotta show them that you have some all-roundedness but um, you want to be all-rounded all-rounded within the uh, actual discipline of our environment artist. so you know you don't need to be great at lighting and all these kind of things but you want to be able to show that you can do at least like most of the model building and the uh, set dressing and stuff like that Okay, now I want to get your input on this topic because every artist goes through this from time to time. What are your thoughts on artists that procrastinate and how can they combat this? Hmm. Uh, procrastination is, man, it's, it's your worst enemy. And uh, I know this because uh, I wasn't horrible once uh, I left university either. So there was like this period of my life where it was like I just sat in my room for about a year, year and a half doing personal portfolio but it wasn't even like I was really doing it I was like playing games a lot of the time and I wasn't really doing uh what I was supposed to do man it was like yeah it's it, every every uh artist kind of goes through this stage and I would say like um the best thing that not like I've learned now anyway um the best thing to do when you're procrastinating and you you've identified that you're procrastinating is uh to kind of treat it like you know as if you're going to the gym like when you haven't been uh have you have with you when you haven't exercised in a long time and you've all of a sudden you know you're like okay i'm going to exercise now and you go into it and you go really really like uh in you, you really give it your all on the first day and then it's like after that it's like you know uh two or three days off uh the next two or three days up to a week you're kind of like sore and you're like oh i can't i can't really go back to gym and you kind of stop it's kind of like you don't want to go all in too quick because um, I I, I'm, I mean it'd be good if you could but I doubt that you could because like you're already struggling with motivational issues so I would say that the best way to do it is kind of like you go in you do a little bit of light work you set a, a small goal and you say okay uh, when I wake up tomorrow it's like I'm gonna have a coffee or something sit down and, and all I'm gonna do is just open the program and just block out whatever it is that I want to do. Like, I have a concept ready. It might not even be, like, to the point where you open the program yet. You might even just be like, okay, I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I'm going to do some rev uh, reference gathering. I'm going to see if I can find a nice a concept art, an art station where uh, someone catches my eye and I'll be like, oh, I really want to build this. And, you know, you might start with that. You might, you might find some reference and then, you know, have, a like, a think about what it is you want to do. And that could be the first step. And then, you know, that you might be done in two hours and then, just call it quits if you're not feeling it and then like then you can have the rest of the day to kind of relax do what you usually do and then the next uh, but you also got to be like okay so tomorrow i'm going to do this thing now you know i have the reference ready so tomorrow i'm gonna you know uh, wake up do the same thing i'm gonna start building a little bit of the scene just block outs or something and then do that for two three hours and then stop do the same thing and you got to kind of ease yourself in and eventually you know you get to a point where um you're adding, you, you kind of, you know, you're, you're setting yourself a schedule. And when you stick to that schedule, it gets easier as you go along. And then eventually, you know, you get to a point where you're making whole, you know, whole scene. And uh, like, I would say like the biggest uh, put off is when you try to start a project and you think too much about what you have to do, that it kind of like kills the motivation in you as well. So this is like the idea of like time boxing things. It's just taking very small tasks and designating them per day and that way you, know, you get a little bit done every day and then without even realizing it uh like you might have been up to like three or four weeks and you've got most of the scene done already it's pretty useful that, that's like my my key thing that i do whenever i do a new project anyway so to for those people out there you got to develop a, a routine as far as like like uh doing a project so so like i would tell like uh, just to give it all the notes, well, to put it all in a nutshell, don't think of everything as like a big project or as a, like a, a big thing. Always think of it in small steps and phases. So that would make it easy for everyone to actually work on the project. Um, 
So, because like we all can actually understand that. So now, now switching gears with this, we want to, let's talk about your YouTube channel because it's called I versus I. Now, can you tell us about what is the main purpose of you actually creating this channel, and and um why? Or what is, what kind of content you want to bring to the people who are visiting your 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 YouTube channel for the first time? Yeah. Um. So I versus I was uh, a little like a small project I started. I think about like um, about two years ago, about two and a bit years ago. Uh, initially, it was just uh, it wasn't it wasn't going to be a huge thing for me. It was more like I had a lot of people messaging me on places like uh, LinkedIn or ArtStation, uh, and they were asking me about you know. Uh, it, it asked for advice about, you know, how to get ready uh, for, like, the industry and stuff like that. And sometimes they'd be like, oh, I'm struggling with this and that. How did you get over this this hurdle with, like, you know, motivation because uh, I'm not, like, working and stuff like that. And I think, like, have, having talked to these people, like, including people I had mentored, um, it's kind of like you end up repeating yourself a lot and you realize like man like I, if only i just had a video or something to just give to these people and you know they could just reference just watch it and look back to it if they like ever need guidance on it and that was kind of like the initial idea with i versus i and i think like the biggest thing is uh at least this is like the most um reoccurring pattern is that a lot of these artists are dealing with a lot of emotional uh baggage when it comes to trying to become an artist uh i think Generally, like even when you go to like university, a lot of these, um, like a lot of the course teaches you about how to do the technical stuff, and uh, they teach you a lot about you know, oh, you how like they kind of teach you how to get ready for the industry and what to expect to some extent, but then um, they never really talk about things that happen within you, like mentally. Uh, and one of the biggest ones was that um, I would say like it's a very common uh, experience that almost feel like. Uh, constant pressure, like things like depression and stuff like that, if you don't know how to deal with stress. Uh, because you're constantly being told um, why your work is bad, essentially. Uh, until until eventually, you know, either people don't tell you why that is bad anymore or they, they tell you that it's good. And essentially, it's just, you know, you, you're constantly dealing with uh, disappointment. Uh, disappointment from them and disappointment in yourself because you know there's an image and a, a vision in your head that you want to achieve but you're not quite hitting it and you don't know why uh and so like this this channel is kind of like to tell you that it's okay it's normal there's normal if you're dealing with emotional issues or if you're you know having uh uh like a little bit of a mental instability with things because you know you're you're uh you've got a lot of pressure on you and you're stressing out and, you know it's just it's normal, it's fine. And that's kind of like the message I'm trying to let people know that, you know, it is hard, uh, but you can't give up. And you got to keep going. Uh, because honestly, there was a lot of times where I wanted to give up. And there was a, there was a point in my life where uh, when I was in Asia and I, I was like, I wasn't sure if I was going to be, in the, you know, doing art for the long haul. And I was like, oh, maybe I should just start recruiting instead for art. And then that way, you know, uh, I don't have to do the artwork anymore. I can just go find people. At least I have an insight. You know, I almost quit. Uh, but I realized, like, you know, you have to keep going. But, like, you know, these these were, like, mental obstacles that no one really talked about. And that was what this channel was for. Uh, but on top of that, you know, I, I tried to dip into things like, you know, my own experiences. Like, for example, the motivational stuff was a really big one for me. Uh, because, you know, I, I played League of Legends a lot when I was... Uh, when I finished university and that was like the worst thing you could do, you know, you just come out of university and there's no more pressure from going to classes and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things like, you know, trying to help other artists out who uh, probably just aren't quite there, like mentally in terms of like, um, when, you know, being ready to, to take on the career as like an actual, uh, an actual responsibility because like a lot of these artists, they probably don't see it yet they probably still think it's a pipe dream but no it's doable man it's attainable you just gotta work hard um but yeah that was what this entire channel was for now before i let you go 
there is one last question I need to ask you. What is, what would you consider as a victory? No matter it pertains to your career, relationship, or life in general. Can you please explain to us your key victory? Key victory in my life is, it's really hard to say, really. I mean, like, it's nice when you can move countries and you're like, uh, like, oh, I started here and there's a roadmap of where you're going. Uh, those are pretty cool. But, like, I think one of the key victories is knowing that you're able to make it to, like, one of the places that you really want to work at. Like, for example, um, so, for example, for me, like, uh, Splash Damage, uh, where uh, I worked on Gears Tactics, Splash Damage was the very first game studio I ever applied for. And uh, I did two art tests for them, and I got rejected twice. Um, when, what you, I, I sent... I sent email uh, applications to them a few times and they didn't even reply at uh, the first time. And then, then when I got to a point where they let me submit art tests, I, I was rejected and stuff. And this was really early on in my career. But like, uh, I went off and I, I worked hard to try and better myself as an artist. And then eventually I got to a point where I was good enough and they offered me a job there. And that was like my first thing. Where I was like, I really wanted to work there. And I, I had to work my way to it. And that was like a good... Feeling. That was like a victory. That's a personal victory for me. And there was also like another goal for me where it was like I had always wanted to go abroad. Uh, you know, not as not like you know, just not like for holiday, but to actually uh, earn like an international kind of um, like an international hireable kind of status. And you know, I, I worked my way to that as well. And it's just like it's kind of like those small things where. Um, it's, you know, they, they seem so far away when you think about it. They're, they're like dreams, honestly, for me. Because I, I still remember at the time when I wanted this job at Splash Challenge or wanted to come to a place like Digital Extremes. Um, you know, it's like they were dreams. And now, you know, I have like the ability mentally to to work my way towards something like that. As, you know, when I grew up, I was lazy. You know, like those, these are like my biggest victories, just knowing how to get myself to work and do things now, really. Well, now with that being said, um, I want to thank you on behalf of Victory 3D on being on uh, Final Render. Now, for those of you who want to follow uh, Desmond, we will actually leave you a link down to his YouTube channel down in the description down below. And if you want to follow him, we actually have like other links to his social media as well in case you want to actually get in contact with him or follow his work. So thank you, Desmond, for being a part of our show and and being a part of Final Render. And is there anything you want to add on to before, for our audience before you go? Um, I would say uh, when it comes to this industry, you know, be very passionate. Um, you can't really enjoy this job if you're not in it, like fully, like mentally anyway. Um, so you just gotta kind of like keep working at it. You know, it's not it's not a quick buck or anything like that. You know, some people think it's gonna be just an easy job because it's like you might draw all day, uh, but it's really not. And and to actually achieve it, you know, it's good to be able to find your passions. Uh, so you know, find whatever you can to fuel you. You know, like if it's like video games or it's just you know watching like cool sci-fi films or something, it really helps. It really goes a long way. Uh, but yeah, thank you, thank you for having me, man. I really uh, appreciate the time. <laughs> No, thank you. So with that being said, everybody, until the next time we meet, you know, we're going to talk about all things 3D and make sure we keep on rendering. Thank you, Desmond.